Um, all right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, very pleased that everyone here is attending the Four Seasons of Reconciliation uh, webinar presented by Andre Casabon. Um, my name is Brian Lynn. I'm with the Alberta Library. Um, I just wanted to do a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, uh, we would actually like to open up this webinar uh, by giving you a chance to ask Andre uh, any questions you might have. Um, so if you have any questions for her, uh, please type them in the uh, question uh, uh, section of your uh, webinar console. Um, but also we'll be opening up uh, the webinar for questions at the end of the webinar as well. So if you have any questions during the webinar, uh, please uh, uh, post them in the, uh, the question section of your uh, control panel at the end. Um, and also, that, just so you know, this webinar will be recorded. So if you happen to miss any of it, we'll be posting a link to the webinar uh, after this concludes. So uh, thanks again for attending. And I'll just hand things over to Andre. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Um, and thank you to all of you for joining in. Um, and I just also, before I forget it, want to extend my, my gratitude to Canada Consortia and particularly Krista Foley and her whole team for welcoming this initiative. Uh, it is the fifth year anniversary of the TRC 94 Calls to Actions. And um, this is a wonderful uh, initiative that's uh, that's being championed by Canada Consortia. So it's uh, it's a pleasure to be um, to be you know <laughs> I, I want to say on video with you, but uh, on audio with you. Um, and um, I'm here in Regina, uh, in Saskatchewan, close to our partner First Nations University, who is uh, our collaborator and our partner on this initiative. So I will also wanted to acknowledge them and acknowledge um, all of the elders and uh, Indigenous educators and, and leaders that compose um, our advisory circle. So they're, um, they're a huge part of this initiative. So today we, uh, we have a bit of time to take in your questions at the beginning and I thought the questions might help guide as well the presentation today. Uh, we'll be going through a short tour of each of the units that are, that are being offered through Canada Consortia as well as leaving some time at the end for a discussion and, and to answer some more questions. So Brian, um, maybe I'll lean on you to, to let me know when, when questions come in and when we have you know, uh, more than two or three, I can, I can kind of pause and, and, and take some questions. So before I do a tour of the resources, Brian, do we have any questions um, for the discussion this afternoon? Uh, we do not. Okay, uh, I'll let you know if we if any pop in. Excellent. And and everyone knows how, how to uh, how to use their uh, their questions uh, format on this uh, on this webinar. So I encourage you to type in your questions, uh, and it will help us guide the discussion and and guide the Q and A at the beginning. So let's get started. So you've received an invitation from Canada Consortia to um, to land on a portal that um, where where you see this uh, this page here that asks you to type in your password. Um, if you have not received the link uh, to please do let us know and 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 let a, leave us a comment so that so that you have access to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you uh, some of the different different resources that are being offered. Um, and then if we have some time at the end, I, I'd love to share uh, a little bit deeper about some of the contributors uh, and, and our role here at, um, at Four Seasons of Reconciliation in, in terms of the, the production company that, uh, that helps uh, assemble all of this together. Uh, so let's get started. So I thought the first thing we would do is we would start with um, showing you uh, an important piece of, of the resource, uh, and that is the Four Seasons of Reconciliation film series. And sometimes when folks have a little bit of time to tour some of these resources, what is in the bonus video section might be an area that they don't have as much time to visit, but with all of the resources, there's an extensive library of films and videos 
Um, and the four films that I'm going to show you, it's it's a it's a little trailer. Um, these four films are found, some of them inside the course. So the first film that we're going to show is on economic reconciliation, and that is part of the professional development uh, course. And the other films are part of the bonus portal, um, and they deal with, with different topics. Two of the films are directed by the elders and, and are actually being shown in film festivals around the world. And the Douglas Cardinal film is... Um, housed for several months at a special exhibition uh, in the Museum of History uh, as well. So let's get started. Uh, I always like to start with films because we are talking about uh, content uh, before we, we get started with technology. And I also um, want... Oh, yeah. Sorry, oh. Andre, uh, before we get started, we do have one question. Um, yeah. So the question is, what would some of best practices for delivering the content of Four Seasons of Reconciliation to staff at my organization. Um, and in bracket parentheses says professional development modules and how can we ensure people engage with the material? Oh, that's a great question. Um, thank you for that. I've made a note of that and I think um, what I appreciate about this question is, is that um, it, it takes us out of the technology. I know we have a quick little technology tour of, of the resource themselves. But what I'm going to do is just before we enter the portal on the professional development, I will talk about um, engagement strategies, uh, rollout options, and different ways that, um, that this professional development course has been used. Um, we've had some colleges in Thunder Bay that have made it mandatory. I know Red River College is also making it mandatory. And other um, other sites have also, uh, without necessarily making it mandatory, but have found uh, ways to engage uh, the majority of their of their staff and employees uh, to learn from the resource and different different best practices from places. For example, in Prince Edward Island, they use the online module to do it together as a team in person. So let me go through that um, as we as we get to um, to that section. So I'm going to take us um, through and and Brian, you'll let me know if uh, if the audio is OK on our end in terms of, of showing the film. So, uh, Brian, sure. yeah. yes. We're good to show some some video content, right, on the webinar. Um, yeah, I guess uh, we'll, we'll uh, go ahead and do it, and um, we'll see Excellent. how it goes. Yeah. Let's see how it goes. Okay, so. <sighs> If Indigenous people were hired at the same rate, and if we were allowed to achieve the same level of education that you have in mainstream, we would be helping to contribute $27.7 billion to Canada's economy. So Buzzwa Fisheries site itself is one of the largest aquaculture sites in Ontario. I really had to convince people this was good business. When First Nations are successful, the whole region is successful. Called business. When First Nations are successful, the whole region is successful. Called to Action 92, we saw the business world and corporate Canada as both the problem and the solution. The First Nations are not asking for a handout. They're asking for a hand up. There has to be a real shift in how corporations engage with First Nations. If you want to make a difference in this world, this is one way to do it. There's such a thing as economic reconciliation, and, and that's very important to say to First Nations, Indigenous people, you're part of the solution. We're going to build this country, and, and you're going to be a participant. Economic reconciliation is about sharing resources, it's about sharing wealth. That's what our treaties were made on. We've lost that path. The Indian Act was never a great trust to be a part of the economy. 
every other jurisdiction in Alice had the opportunity to build infrastructure, economies, jobs, opportunities, and even hope. And uh, we've always wanted to take our rightful place and be a part of the economy. If we don't create wealth for the First Nations, it's a blight on the nation. So we have to be a bridge between corporate Canada and First Nations. I wanted the buildings to be connected to our mother, the earth, mothers on the earth. Not only is he an architect, but he's also a genius. I thought that evolving a style of architecture that is more in honor of the female and more in honor of female values would reflect my own Anishinaabe culture. This was my medicine a long time ago. And this is my medicine now. When I had cancer, this is what brought me back to life. It's not lost, it's there. We haven't lost anything. Look for that special something that you were blessed with. A lot of our young people, they don't know they have it, but it's there, you just have to look for it. What, what does it take to shake up the land, you know, like the buffalo? That's the awakening. Or establishing that connection. And, and the ancestors, they're smiling. I think elders are extremely precious because they, they hold all our knowledge, right? So we need them to share everything they have with us before they're gone. This was our first classroom when I was a child. This is where I learned my, my first teachings. Being around laughter and the good food and the songs and the ceremony and all of that for me is about an energy that you take away from here and you carry that with you. This is who we are. This is our way of life. Our students are hungry for this, but they're very afraid. You know, our elders, when they pray to the Creator, to the Mother Earth, in the four directions, they've been doing that for thousands of years. These students at First Nations University, these are the future. So I appreciate your patience. Um, Brian, you can still me hear me okay? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we actually have a couple questions. Uh, they're both the same, but uh, a couple of people are wondering if there is uh, closed captioning in the videos. And if there is, uh, what percentage of videos uh, uh, have uh, closed captioning? Yes, absolutely. So that's an easy question. So yes, there are, um, just a second here. Um, yes, there are uh, closed captions and uh, the resource is also available in French. And that's for all of the videos then? That's for all of the videos that find themselves in the courses and then in the bonus section where we have hours of additional content that's available to, um, to learners. Um, I would say about 70%. 
are now all closed captions. Um, it's it's a financial investment. So we we hire a professional company. These are not uh, YouTube generated uh, closed captions. So um, those are the kinds of investments that we continue to make in the resource. But certainly, for example, if you're if you're taking the professional development uh, course for the workplace, all of the videos that are part of the critical learning before you get your certificates, all of those have closed captions. Okay, thank you. Uh, should we uh, should we begin the tour of the resources? And and one thing I'll say just before we get started, I appreciate your patience. I can see that in um, in the webinar itself there was a bit of a lag in the trailer. Um, and so thank you for 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 um, for being patient with that. But I just thought it'd be important to show you uh, the kind of the kind of, of films that are also in in the bonus section in case we don't have time to to visit the bonus portal together. Um, and as well, uh, you know, in the customization of your portal, you can also select different films for module one so different um different colleges universities or, or organization will customize uh their own portal to start off with a different film um so so it's just to show you a selection of films that you can keep in the bonus uh, portal or actually bring uh, inside um your portal um so let's begin with the professional development one uh, because of that earlier question and so bear with me here as I as I work through uh, all these different tabs um, and as I do that uh, coming back to that initial question of best practices and and how to engage the workplace and in, uh, in learning from from uh, the professional development course um, I great ten professional development. Okay, so where's the um so it would be here. This one? Yeah. Okay. So great. that's a thank you. Uh, professional yeah. development, not this course at all. Gotcha. So we're now in the portal uh for the professional development and um the best way to answer that that question about um engagement, uh I, I will say that that part of Part of the journey of Four Seasons of Reconciliation is not just receiving um, access to resources, um, but also an ongoing uh, relationship, if if you so choose, with with our team here uh, at Four Seasons of Reconciliation to book calls and discuss onboarding strategies. And we do that where we take some time with you to see, you know, what are your learners' needs. Um, what are some other strategies from across the country that we can share with you that that would help you? Um, uh, and 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 also sometimes folks want to be connected to other sites, you know, to to hear directly from those colleges or universities. So so those are some of the ways that we help you. So it's not like you just receive this this course and then. Um, you know, we we say, well, good luck with it. You know, some organizations prefer not to book uh, those kinds of calls, and sometimes we're able to have them in in person as well. Um, so that's the first thing I want to say is that we are here to to help you. You know, every step of the way. So if you do choose to 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 move forward with these resources, um, then part of that is is helping you in in the onboarding process. So here is an example of the course. It, it would have um, here at the top, we have the, the Consortia Canada logo. It would have your own logo, your own um, land acknowledgement. Uh, sometimes we have executives or presidents uh, or indigenous leads that will uh, have a video recording that we embed here. So kind of like a welcome to uh, four Seasons of Reconciliation, and here's why our organization is doing that. So these are these are the um, the types of customization elements that you would find before you take the course. There's also, of course, the option to have your human resources uh, team or your tech team be part of the admin of the course, so that um, they can, in all transparency, see um, um, you know the 
the, the course and, and the learners and so on. We also provide you with, with uh, user reports on a regular basis so you can see who has signed in and who has received their, their certificates so that the organization is, is, um, is in the loop in terms of, of the success and the onboarding of, of the course. Um, and so let me walk you through. So, so here's, um, let me see if I can move this over so you can see it a little bit better. So here at the top are, are, are the course elements. So, so if you look at it this way, you know, you begin the course here and then you move through 10 modules of the 10th one being the final quiz. Uh, there's a pre-quiz at the beginning uh, to kind of test your, your journey. After each module, there's, um, there's four questions that help you retain the information. Uh, you need 65% in order to receive your certificate. Um, and that's a, a certificate as well that can be shared on LinkedIn. And, and we have some people who do that. They'll, they'll, uh, they'll share it on social media or add it to their, to their education profile on LinkedIn. Um, and so here, for example, uh, so Brian, is my screen really small or are people able to see these squares well, or is it blurry from, from your end? Um, I mean, it looks, I think it looks okay to me. Um, I think. Okay. Um, I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit, but as you can see here, you have, um, yeah, this should be a little bit better. Here you have the film Third World Canada. As we were watching the trailer, another option is also uh, many, many organizations will choose to start with the film on economic reconciliation and move Third World Canada uh, in the bonus section. Um, it's a film that deals with the uh, ongoing intergenerational traumas uh, of the residential school era. And, and so it's a community that is um, reeling from lack of housing uh, and as well the impacts of, of suicide uh, on a family. So, um, so that's something that can be part of the bonus uh, features or, or part of the truth telling. So, so again, that's another example of customization. So in this portal here, um, uh, the selected film is Third World Canada. So that's always module one. We start with a film and then we move through colonial lens, pre-contact, treaties, residential school, um, UNDRIP, uh, the United Nations Declaration on, on, on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, Indigenous Relations at Work, so, so applications for the workplace, uh, and then we close with reconciliation, restitution, and of course the final quiz. Whether you're in the professional development portal, the um, secondary uh, history course portal, or the post-secondary, all of the themes that I've just um, um, highlighted are part of all of the resources, but they're just taught differently uh, for the different learner styles. So in this case here, we're in a workplace portal, so we're gonna learn uh, about these um, at your own pace. Um, I was sharing the example of Prince Edward Island, so all of the school divisions in French and English there, as, as well as Manitoba, um, have this course. Uh, but in PEI, what they do is they get together in the workplace um, and they will, uh, they will do the course together. So everybody kind of logs in, does module one, uh, and then they have a discussion and they keep going through that. And they've been doing that now for, for about two years. Um, and then the, um, the teachers and, and faculty and, and staff can go in the bonus portal and, and continue their learning that way. Uh, so that's an example of a, of a different application. Um, and so at the end, you receive a, a certificate the uh, the portal here, you know, allows you to uh, you can see my progress here, um, and you can see that I've completed at one percent the course. So it tracks your progress. You can log in and log out. You create your own profile, your own password, um, and so we'll pick on um, what shall we pick on? We'll pick on uh, module three. So you have. 
you know, the learning outcomes here. And it shows you that in this module, there'll be a PowerPoint, there'll be a video and a quiz. And there's always the capacity to click the assistance button and, and, and access our, our team with, within, a, within a reasonable amount of time, we, we, will, we will help um, with technical questions. Um, and so this is an example of a slide. And again, this particular PowerPoint or, or slide deck has been uh, adapted for post-secondary um, as well as, as grade 10. So same learning outcomes, but again, a little bit of a different content for, for each learner. And in order to view the slide, you would just um, click through them. So um, I'm going fast here because uh, we have a, you know, a few things to, to cover. Um, um, let's skip to you know a little bit near the end. So um, so here we have different indigenous um, uh, contributions and indigenous worldviews. And so then after you would have uh, a short video here. So uh, we're we're not going to you know have time to to, to watch it together. But it shows you that um, you know that there's um, that there's multimedia accessible. Uh, you know, in this case, this is actually the same community from the film Third World Canada with their Indigenous educators. Uh, we went back and 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 helped create a, a short uh, documentary series um, that's for their own classrooms and is in OG Cree and and in English as well. Um, and is also um, for classroom application, and in this case, for adult learners to to learn uh, to learn directly. Uh, and then there would be, you know, a quiz, and um, and then you would move forward. Now, in this uh, portal here, we're able to jump around. Uh, you know, we can go to module seven right now. Um, but when you're when you order the course uh, you're not able that you know each of your learner each of your employees are not able to move to you know number five if they have not um, if they have not done uh, the previous modules but in order to help you um, in order to help you you know browse through the resource uh, quickly um, you know we've We've created it in in such a way that you can that you can move around. So we're again we're we're not going to stop and 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 watch this film, but here's an example uh, of a collaboration uh, with um, Margaret Reynolds, who's one of the elders and directors of two of the films that I showed you earlier. Uh, from uh, she's she's Dene, and and here she. Uh, shares her own experiences, and and this is a video that that she created um, because the uh, elders did not want to go into residential schools in the film, so this was a supplemental uh, feature. Uh, so so we're we're hearing from different perspectives across the country. In uh, in treaties, we have um, Morris Switzer, uh, who's from Ontario, uh, Anna Schnabe from Ontario. Who uh, shares about treaties? And he's also, you know, uh, uh, carries the knowledge of, of treaty belts. So he explains what is that that treaty relationship um, in this video after you've watched the PowerPoint. So that's all the time that I want to take for going into the professional development portal. I, I wanted to give you a, a quick tour and a sense of what it is. Um, if you do move forward with it, well then we would work with the HR, the library team, uh, the indigenous uh, office uh, in terms of creating strategies to, to roll it out in your organization. Um, and so that that's what we would do. We would be here to help support you uh, through this. Um, and then in terms of the authors of, of each of the different pieces uh, that are found within the course, uh, the accessibility uh, commitment, you know, um, 
how to access it and so on uh, is, is, is found in there as well. So you have the contributors and the advisors here and, and so on. Um, Brian, are there any questions that are specific to the PD before I jump into the post-secondary portal? You know, we actually have quite a few questions. I wonder if maybe it would be better just to just wait until the end of the uh, the uh, the next section. Okay, so would you like me to move forward on the post-secondary, or should we stop in and, and take some questions? Uh, here, I'll just ask you just one question here, and then maybe we'll just move on to the next section. But uh, I've got one question, which was, uh, how many languages are represented in this resource? Uh, I wonder if they mean um, indigenous languages. Um, so I'll that answer the uh, okay. So I'll answer the question in in two parts. Um, let me just see if I can go back to. Uh, can I access the uh, bonus sections? So can you, can you just yeah. bring us to the bonus sections? So um, in terms of Indigenous languages, um, it is our hope to have uh, this resource available in uh, different Indigenous languages. Uh, so for example, Waikap Dakota Nation here in Saskatchewan is, is one um, nation as well as their, their, um, their companies that have this resource and uh, they speak Dakota and um, they invest quite a bit in Dakota language for, for their community. Uh, so, so it would be a dream to, to have it in, in some of the um, Indigenous languages. We do hear um, Cree and Soto um, in, in some of the films, um, but in terms of Indigenous languages, if that was um, the context of the question, when you get to the bonus section, um, there is a, um, a section on Indigenous languages, 2019 being the, uh, the, the year of Indigenous languages. And so um, this is something if, if the question was, was interested in, in seeing some content that showcases Indigenous languages, this would be a good section to come and visit um, uh, a series on six of the languages that are in Ontario, for example. So this was this was created in Ontario. Um, so yeah, so I would invite you to to go visit that, and if you'd like to help us uh, in terms of having different versions, um, that would be absolutely wonderful to hear from you. It is currently available in in English and French, so all of the resources are are available in both those languages. Um, so Brian, I'll, I'll jump on to the post-secondary portal. So here we have, um, this is where the instructor would, would land here. And so this course, uh, same, uh, same, uh, themes as was, as was in the, uh, professional development course for the workplace, uh, this, this is for a five hour block. Of course you can and turn it into 10 hours if you'd like, or two hours if you're pressed for time, but it's meant to give a small building block for your, for your classroom, so, so for your students in, in colleges or university um, that provides, and again, all of these resources are not an in-depth, they're really meant to be that, that first uh, foundational piece in terms of the knowledge. So, so really that, that awareness, that, that piece of, of education that none of us uh, would have received in, in our Canadian education um, if, if you went to school uh, prior to um, a few years ago, I suppose. So it, it's really meant to, to provide that, that base knowledge. Um, but a, an educator could certainly take some of the elements in here and, and go a lot deeper. So we're not gonna show video because we don't have time, but, but here's a good context um, a piece, uh, an introduction video that, that is good. Um, we have Charlene Bearhead, who was the um, education lead for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission for, for, um, uh, for engaging with the TRC and the education sector. And so Charlene has provided us a video here 
um, that's about 10 minutes that helps educators um, provide them with a framework of how to engage uh, their students in reconciliation and what do you do if, if you're an instructor or a faculty member or a teacher that doesn't feel comfortable um, or doesn't feel knowledgeable enough. So, so Charlene Bearhead has provided this, this video for, for four seasons. Um, and so the first step here that you would do is, is you would download the instructor guide that would kind of walk you through um, um, the, the section. So there's three sections to the post-secondary. There's, there's this portal here that we're looking at, which is the instructor portal. Uh, and then there's also a student portal for the students to take um, their final quiz and also to access um, uh, articles as well as, as videos and the term bank. Um, and so this is where the post-secondary begins. It begins with the instructor. Um, so the instructor preparing themselves for, for teaching the course. And, and here we have the elements. So it's a hour one would be showing the film, Third World Canada. There would be a discussion and then access would be given to the student portal. So after this first hour in class, so again, this is the hour one in class, um, the uh, professor instructor would provide students with the password and, and access to their portal. And we recognize that in colleges and universities, um, there's different timeframes for courses. Some courses are only one hour. And so you can adapt this, but we've blocked it off, assuming that maybe you can do it all in one sitting, or maybe you do it over a few weeks. Hour two um, would involve, so again, you, you see some of the same themes uh, from, from the PD. So they would involve um, these four PowerPoints with, with a discussion. And um, again, hour three would be the remaining PowerPoints. Now, what the students have is the videos that they can watch um, uh, on their own. Uh, and so that's what they would do. Here we provide the link to the film, a disclaimer, um, and there are two versions. There's a shorter version with some of the sensitive scenes having been removed and a longer version. Um, you know, the viewer discretion uh, can be found here. Here's the introductory video, the one video as well that, um, that would be shown in class to, to help students understand about this unit. This is how uh, you would download the PowerPoints to show them in class. So if you clicked on this, it would it would take you to um, a Dropbox folder, and it would provide you with access. Uh, there's a short, uh, humorous um, film from um, uh, American Indigenous uh, Stephen Paul Judd, who um, who's uh, gifted this film in, in the resource um, and he's just so tickled funny that uh, that it's being shown in Canada and French and English in classrooms. It's a really funny film and if we had time I, I would show this. It's only a minute and 42 but it's the Indigenous perspective of the boats arriving so it's a pretty pretty funny film to, to kind of end on on uh, some some heavier topics perhaps. And so then, um, then this is how you would share access with the students. So here's the student portal. They have a video library um, and, and they can find their quiz there. And so the instructor would share this link and this password um, and could also access themselves, of course, the student portal. We might, we'll come back to that in, a, in, in just a moment. And then as well, if your college or university, um, you know, doesn't have as well the companion professional development resource, um, we have provided a, a complimentary, um, you know, shorter uh, condensed library for, for, for instructors so that, you know, colleges, universities don't feel like they have to buy both. Um, often, um, 
you may start with the PD and that's usually the most popular one. And then what happens is the faculty wants to now bring it in the classroom. And so then they might uh, purchase the post-secondary resource um, or you know, your organization might choose to um, just start with the post-secondary. Uh, so, so the instructor can find materials here. Um, and so you know, here are some of the videos that are available. Uh, and some links and some further readings. And so uh, I'm gonna scroll fast, so my, my apologies for, uh, I hope I'm not making you dizzy here, but now I just wanna show you um, quickly the, the student portal for the, for the post-secondary. So the student would only receive access to this site here, this page here, so they would not see the same pages as the instructor sees. But the students can have access to the PowerPoints in their classroom to continue learning from them or to take notes or um, or maybe they want to use it in another paper for another class that they want to quote. Um, here are some of the readings. Um, and then their playlist is kind of organized like this, same, same videos. Uh, and they have access to, to some of these elements here. If they miss the film, um, they can watch it here. There's, and there's their, their final quiz and then the students receive, they don't receive a certificate, but they can receive a badge. Okay, and I wanna leave some time for a question and answer. So I'm just gonna go through the uh, grade 10 uh, resource, which some of you have also asked for access to. This one. And so, um, this is a testimony, this video is a testimony from educators that are using the resource in their classroom. So again, now we're in the grade 10 or grade nine on the uh, in New Brunswick and PI, they they've embedded this in their grade nine. Um, so this is it's also used like so for example, Polytechnic College uh, utilizes the grade ten for uh, they have a program for um, dual education. So students who want to catch up their secondary and and complete it and and receive some some uh, dual credits and they also use it for new Canadians that they have a program where um, uh, these are adult learners so they they prefer to use the grade ten for for those students so it's a little bit different it's meant to be taught in a classroom from start to finish and so here we have um, again the same themes but a Monday to Friday. So in uh, in Ontario, that's 75 minutes per um, per day. And in um, some of the other provinces, it's 55 minutes. So it can be adapted for, for both. So the teacher here, there's a 60 page guide for the teacher. There's everything the teacher needs for this unit um, from disclaimers and and dis discussion uh, questions to um, how to invite an Indigenous uh, guest in, in the classroom. Um, so the teacher would start by downloading the guide, um, saving some of the resources on a USB stick or on their computer. So for example, the PowerPoints, they're, they're invited to explore the portals to, to learn a little bit more and as well um, watch some, some videos. So this is the design of what the teacher guide uh, looks like. It's also available in French and English. It's been adapted a little bit differently for New Brunswick, for example. The Ministry of Education has uh, participated fully in integrating this. But for the most part, uh, across Canada, they're, they're the, same, uh, the same content. Um, and so, you know, the educator would begin there. They would download the guide and watch this. And then again, um, here are some maps um, and some of the PowerPoints uh, that are available. 
Um, these are maps that they can also hang in the classroom. So we have residential schools, treaties, um, Turtle Island, so pre-contact. And then they have uh, films. And I just want to bring you, and so the professional development, some of the videos from the post-secondary, and just one last quick visit. So, so the grade 10 or grade 9 students have a, a group project that they do, and they get to uh, visit reconciliation from their own um, topics of interest. So, you know, some, so maybe sports. So what does sports have to do with reconciliation or... Uh, the arts or fashion, you know, and so as they choose their theme for their group project, we hope that they also um, invest extra extra time into these areas of interest. So, for example, in for the grade 10 students, if um, they could choose um, to read different stories, you know, um, stories in Canada, stories uh, in New Zealand, um, the discussion around uh, racist uh, mascots, as well as um, Nietzsche gear, which has decided to provide positive indigenous uh, created uh, sports logos and sports clothing, um, and students' responses and creating positive projects in their school around um, around uh, mascots and so on. So. So young people get to learn about um, their areas of interest that, that brings them uh, into topics of reconciliation. So we have a little bit over, barely over 10 minutes. So I want to stop there, but let me say that um, if, um, I know we've toured a lot of different portals, a lot of similar themes and in, in different places, um, you can you can always book uh, an additional uh, contact call um, at any time with us. Um, I know Canada Consortia can also provide you with information. Um, and if you do choose to move forward on on these resources, we're we're here to to assist you. We also sometimes like for the, for example the University of Alberta. Um, we did a couple of webinars for them that faculty and teachers could could log in and these are complimentary they, they're just we want to make sure that you're feeling comfortable with these resources and you're feeling comfortable in, in rolling them out um, sometimes i'll i'll come in and, and do um, uh, presentations with some of the uh, indigenous collaborators and, and authors from the resource so that's a possibility as well so if um, if it's a lot to take in, you know, uh, please don't be worried about the technology. Those are things that can be that can be uh, worked around, and we're here to support you. So Brian, are there some questions uh, or comments from um, from uh, from folks around uh, around Canada around around this tour? Yeah, yeah, we've got lots of great questions here. Um, uh, there's one that sort of jumped out at me uh, from a public library. Um, just need to find it again. Uh, basically, uh, the question is potentially in our organization, some units could possibly progress through modules as groups within staff meetings. Um, and they were just wanted to hear your thoughts on using your resource as a professional development tool uh, for their staff in the public library setting. Well, thank you for that. And I appreciate the context because it helps me to see because public library um it is it is a, a workplace that's a little bit different than say a college or university and and um and in some region the library team are all in this on the same site you know in the same physical location or at least in the same um uh, town or, or city and so you you see each other you know in face-to-face -face context you might have uh, monthly meetings or weekly meetings um and so I would suggest uh, perhaps using the same approach as Prince Edward Island has, where um, you know there there's some of the videos that are being watched together as a group. Um, here in Saskatchewan, we have the Ministry of Advanced Education, so government employees all in the same building, um, all on the same site. And what they've done is they've customized uh, it a little bit so that. Uh, learners, employees go and learn it, um, uh, some of the elements on their own, and then there will be, um, they'll bring people back together 
to watch a film and invite an Indigenous guest. So that's another way to do it. So, so it's a combination of in-person and learn at your own pace. But at the same time, what they've done is, is their entire organization has a schedule. So, so they've divided up with seasons, you know, they've kept with the themes of season and they, they have an Indigenous lead um, that has, you know, kind of championed this modification for, for the needs of their workplace. And so what they've been able to do is, um, uh, you know, they'll, they'll, the first three modules are due in 60 days. So the whole organization knows that they don't have to do all 10 modules, they just have to do, you know, the first three. And so in terms of employee time away from, from their other duties, it's, it's manageable. And then um, even if the learners wanted to access, you know, past module three, they can't, either portal blocks them uh, until that's released uh, according to their calendar schedule. And so when you're done module three, then there's a film and a discussion and people come back together. So, so that might be um, uh, a fit for a public library uh, system. Um, and I also just want to point out that we're um, looking at ways to create a uh, an adaptation of this resource for, for the public. So the general public can access this. So we're looking at uh, creating um, uh, an adapted version for public public libraries, uh, so for the library uh, patron themselves. So, so the general public that has a library card could come in and um, either take a guided uh, journey or um, choose your own adventure in a way. You know, they could go thematically and enter the theme of treaties and, and travel through through the content there. So if there is a library that, that would like to help us and provide us uh, with feedback on this, um, this idea and development, you know, please reach out to us. But in terms of, um, staff training i think i think some of these models of of doing a combination of both and again that's something we can we can help you with but that that would be a good application for for the workplace course okay thank you uh, i've got a two-part question for you here um first one was another school involved in piloting this resource during development and if so which school and the second question is is this resource a nonprofit? Okay, well, let me start with um, the last question and I'll work my way back to pilot schools. Um, uh, so this this resource, so for example, if you if you go ahead and order the resource, uh, you would be um, filling out the order through Canada Consortia and Canada Consortia um, would be working with our, our film and video production company, which is a social venture, but it is classified as a, as a private sector organization. Um, and so if that's uh, something, you know, in terms of, um, of, uh, of financial uh, reasoning, you know, it's, it's important that, um, that you know that this is, this is an organization that is a, a private sector organization. We're, we're set up that way because we do sell um, films or work with broadcasters and that's what they require. Um, but we are a social venture, so 7% uh, of the proceeds um, starting in the spring, because we're now pretty much done the investment in the resource, uh, is going towards scholarship for uh, First Nations University uh, of Canada. Um, and we also uh, invest and donate uh, our resources to Indigenous-led uh, organizations. So, so those are some of the ways that that we do give back. Um, and again, if that's something you wanted to, you know, explore further, um, you know, feel free to connect with us uh, directly. The second question: pilot schools. Um, there, the first version of this resource was in 2013, uh, and it was a grant from the Aboriginal Healing Foundation, and um, they were looking at um, assisting um, uh, organizations that would carry on their uh, residential school education um, initiative. 
and so they they approached us because they they um, they really liked um, Third World Canada uh, in terms of an education resource. So they brought together their education team um, and and helped us design um, this this learning journey and created a, a, a grant to pilot it in, in some classrooms. And so at the beginning, it was called the Third World Canada Multimedia Textbook. Uh, and that was in 2013. And so the University of Ottawa, the Faculty of Education was a pilot site and they continued uh, over the years um, to pilot um, all of our new resources with their indigenous team as well. Um, to in, inside the Faculty of Education. So they've continued on. We've had pilot sites like uh, Peel, um, Catholic School Board, um, Laurentian University, uh, Sioux College, First Nations University of Canada, the University of Regina. Um, oh, I, I hope, uh, no, not as a pilot. Um, Oh, there's a few school boards. Well, for the French version, we've had um, all of the 13 school uh, boards in, in Ontario um, take on the grade 10 resource. And so Via Mond was one of the, the school division that was uh, an active pilot site and contributor as well. I'm sure I forget some folks, but I think, you know, as well, I think, um, uh, it's also now, now that it's no longer in pilot, it's it's in six provinces in French and English in different secondary and post-secondary um, education. Um, and so, you know, if there are specific questions about, you know, where where else it is, I'm, I'm happy to answer that. Or maybe you have a question about, you know, which province it, it might be in. Um, I'm just looking at the clock, Brian, and I want to make sure that um, I'm respectful of everyone's time. Um, is there is there are there other questions, um, Brian, or other things you feel that would be important before uh, we close off on the call? You know, I think we just have time uh, for one last question, and it's just a follow up to the PD question. Uh, mm -hmm. And then after that, what I'll do is I'll just forward the questions that were left unanswered to you, and then maybe you can oh. respond uh, by email. Um, and also, I can't remember if you did this or not, but maybe it'd be good if you could share your email on the webinar here so that people uh, can hold you. <laughs> Absolutely. I was actually going. So if you go to reconciliationeducation.ca and you hit the contact, uh, there's a French section here as well, but you can uh, send us an email here and also book a call directly here. It goes right to our calendar and it, it avoids any uh, time zone differences. Um, and as well, here's our, our contact information. We're, we're based out of Regina, um, but we still keep um, a mailbox in, in Toronto. And, and so there are some phone numbers there. So the website is reconciliationeducation.ca and you simply go to the contact tab. Uh, go ahead, uh, Brian, with that question. Sure, so for the PD offering, um, I see that there is a monthly webinar coaching and onboarding for staff. Does that run every month? And is there a set period of time for this? Um, yeah, so if you if you send us an email and you let us know, it's not like, um, and maybe that might be a good idea in, in the future, but right now we just run it off based of a list of interests. So if you send us an email and you're interested, and then sometimes we'll host specific webinars just for a particular organization, uh, in the case of the University of Alberta, for example, and that was just for their faculty and staff. So that's something that uh, we can offer broadly as well as um, one organization at a time. But if you're interested in that, just drop us a, a note and let us know and uh, we will uh, invite you to the next one. All right, well, thank you very much. Um, just a sort of reminder, I'll be following up with an email to everybody to let you know uh, how to link to the video for this webinar. Um, and uh, I'll make sure to include Andre's email on that as well. Um, so thanks again for everyone who attended and um, I hope everybody has a great rest of the day. So take care. Thank you. Thank you, Brian, for hosting us. No problem. Thank you, Andre. So I'm just gonna end the webinar.